Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Guide to Learning with CMI, supporting someone on a CMI qualification webinar. My name is Ellen McCormack, and I'm an events executive at CMI. I will shortly be handing over to Joe Lavelle, who will be running the session today. If you have any questions during the webinar, you can ask them using the live chat box on the right of your screen. We shall answer as many as we can. This session is being recorded and it will be shared with you later on today for those of you who are booked to attend. Now over to Joe to begin. Cool, thanks Ellen. Uh, hi everyone, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. So um, today's session is all around um, the benefits really and the impact of being on a CMI accredited course. Um, but this is aimed really at explaining it to those who um, might be parents or have care responsibilities or just know someone who is about to start one of our courses um, very soon. Um, we'll talk about the impact they will have on students and the benefits that they get for, from our course and all of the things that they get as part of that CMI membership. Um, if you are a student, if you're about to start your course, uh, we did a session earlier in this week that is specifically for, for you, where we go through um, exactly how it relates to you personally. Um, and if you are uh, someone who is maybe thinking about their options and not quite sure what path they're doing, maybe considering an accredited degree. Again, we did another webinar earlier this week um, as part of this series, so this is one for you. So this session really is for those who, um, like I say, have a family or friends who are about to start a course and really want to know more about the, the benefits and impact of that. Um, so I guess the first thing what I want to really is talk about uh, professional bodies as a concept because I'm aware that it's something that uh, people talk about and it might not be something that you've had any awareness of so far in, in your career or in your life. So uh, professional bodies are groups that are dedicated to promoting a career um, and really for the benefit of those who do it. Um, in the UK, there's over 80 chartered professional uh, organisations. Um, and this, they have a royal charter, which means they can give that chartered status um, out to people who are their members. Um, how this is awarded is defined by both the organisation and the government. So you can't change it without government permission. And what this does is adds uh, a layer of respectability and credibility to that status um, and really does demonstrate sort of excellence and skills that are really specific to that, to that title and to that accolade. Uh, you have to maintain your status, that's very important as well. So um, most professional bodies will put on regular CPD, professional development activity, to enable you to make, ensure that your knowledge and the skills that you have uh, are remain at the top and worthy of having that chartered status. Um, and really, I guess uh, an easy comparison to draw is to students' unions. So um, what they do in terms of representing their members and sort of campaigning for, um, for sort of better skills and doing more research into their membership, um, as well as finding the opportunities is really similar to us, um, but we do it on a, a sort of different scale and nationally, but all those who are really involved in that sector. Um, it really is giving our members an opportunity to find out more, to develop themselves, and to a platform to tell everyone else about all the excellent work that they're doing in management and leadership. Um, so I guess the next uh, question, which would make sense, would be who are, who are CMI? Who are they and what do they do? Well, CMI are the Chartered Management Institute. We've existed for over 60 years, um, and our aim is to eradicate the accidental manager. Um, now, the accidental manager is someone who has been promoted to a role um, with management responsibility, and that's not necessarily who had the training that they need to be an excellent manager or leader. Uh, they might be promoted due to length of service, or maybe they've got a special technical skill. So, Maybe they've just worked somewhere a long time, so have been promoted as a result of that, or they're very good at a certain thing, so now lead that sort of area. Um, but they might not be given sort of management and leadership training or qualifications to enable them to effectively manage either people or projects or resources. Um, this isn't their fault at all. Um, and actually, we find it's really common. We think around four out of five managers um, are accidental managers. Um, so what CMI do is provide training and qualifications that are aligned to our professional standards. Um, and these ensure that managers have the skills that they really need in order to deliver maximum impact for both themselves and their organizations. The professional standards are, is that wheel that you can see on the right hand side of the slide. Um, and these are nine key areas that we align all of our activity against. Um, and it's broken down into three main sections. So it's organizational performance, personal effectiveness, and interpersonal excellence. We know this is what makes a manager a better manager. Uh, and we enable our learners and our members to gain skills in these key areas, which they can then use to demonstrate their uh, acumen towards becoming a chartered manager. 
The Charter Manager is that chartered recognition of your management and leadership skills. It is a reflective exercise uh, done to demonstrate that to employers and to your colleagues that you are meeting those industry standards as a manager and leader. Um, and there's a really good impact as well for both businesses and for the wider sort of UK economy. And we'll touch upon this a little bit later. Um, one of the other things that CMI does is uh, research policy and qualifications as well. So the qualifications we've touched upon, um, but research policy, we make sure that our members have access to really sort of cutting edge information, talking about um, all the real issues that are relevant to them. So for example, we have recently um, hosted both a Brexit hub and a COVID-19 hub to make sure that there is areas on our, resource, on our website with our resources on that can support our members getting through the difficult challenges they might be facing around these certain policy areas um, and ensuring that they're able to navigate through these times of difficulty um, towards what is likely to be a new normal. So as a CMI learner, there are three ways that you, that you could be associated with us and three ways that sort of, uh, your uh, friend, family might be um, about to join CMI. Um, so we are doing dual accredited university courses as one of our options. So this is where we look at university degrees and we look at our management leadership qualifications and we see where uh, the learning outcomes and learning requirements for both of them map. And where there is certain crossover, we are able to say that by doing your university degree, you are getting the same learning as if you're doing one of our qualifications and therefore you can get both at the same time. So you automatically get that CMI qualification upon your graduation um, and you get membership and access to CMI and our resources throughout your studies in able to help you uh, with both courses and in, in order to have some sort of maximum impact um, during your studies. You might be starting an apprenticeship uh, with CMI, so it might be doing one of our uh, Charter Management Degree Apprenticeships or a Senior Leader Management Degree Apprentice, um, or we might be your EPA, your Endpoint Assessment Provider um, as well. Um, or you might be doing a standalone CMI qualification um, to help your career. So um, you might uh, be in work and just doing one of our sort of qualifications to develop your management and leadership skills. Uh, CMI offer qualifications all the way from level three to level eight, um, and we deal with a whole range of management skills and practices. Um, so for our learners, if they've completed one course, it's really likely there's gonna be a pathway for them to continue learning with CMI um, if they want to develop their management skills and their management knowledge. Um, and at the end of the course, depending on what uh, our learners have previously studied um, and their management experience, there's some different options for them and different pathways they can take. Um, and this is sort of a demonstration of the, the career journey with CMI. So um, a lot of our learners start as uh, aspiring managers, those who are trying to make their mark in the workplace, trying to understand um, a bit more about the skills that they need to get by. So they're possibly in their first job or just completed their studies. Um, as they apply sort of, and expand their knowledge and, and build their experience, they can then grow along their career. Um, and CMI is with them at every step of that, of that journey. It's providing them with CPD opportunities, providing them with um, opportunities to engage with our membership of managers across the world, um, and finding them with learning and events to really ensure that they're able to reflect upon the impact they're having as a manager um, and actively demonstrate their excellence uh, throughout their, their working life. And again, I, I guess it's important to, in, to reaffirm as well that CMI isn't just a partner for studies. So we, we work with our with university providers and with uh, training providers to enable you to get skills that you need. But CMI really is something that people should see as a career partner and not just something that they're doing alongside their, their university course or, or their college course. Um, this is really something that you should see, uh, see for life, really. So that, that's who we are. That, that's kind of an introduction to CMI. Um, so what I want to do is now run through some of the key resources that our learners get access to um, with CMI that we think are really helpful for people on studying our courses. So the first thing is Management Direct. So we know that uh, library spaces are likely to be uh, different to perhaps how they were previous academic years with social distancing, perhaps limited opening hours, and limited capacities. Um, so Management Direct is a really helpful tool, particularly in this time. Um, it's an online library of resources that are, is there for you whenever you need it. So it is 24 seven available for you to log in um, and our learners will either log in through our website or through their uh, university or training provider. It's filled with eBooks, with articles, with videos, with models, with checklists, anything that a learner might need for their projects or for their assignments can be found on Management Direct. And it's got a great search function, which allows you to find resources depending on how much time you have. So we can make sure that it really fits around the life, uh, sort of the times and needs of our learners. 
So it breaks down uh, into five minute briefings. So these might be templates or definitions of things that people can quickly look at, maybe while they're on the bus, uh, going on their way to a lecture, or even just sort of waiting outside their seminar if they've arrived a little bit early, uh, to just help them refresh and to get a basic understanding of that topic area. And then we have uh, longer briefings as well. So we have 20 minute briefings and extended briefings. So if you are a learner and you're doing uh, maybe some essay work or trying to understand more of the theory, these uh, longer briefings allow you to get those skills um, and to get that information that you need. And it's all, as we say, mapped specifically against those common search terms that you need. CMI also has playlists of learning as well to help you meet specific learning objectives. So we have it all mapped against our professional standards and the standards you require for your qualification. Um, so if there is a certain learning outcome that you're trying to understand more about, um, you can go onto these playlists of learning, they're called learning journeys, um, and there is a whole lot of curated content there specifically built for you to understand these areas of management and leadership more. Um, so you can go in there, go through this learning and know that everything that you are getting are quality sources that should help you achieve your learning goals. Um, and it's, it's a great tool, Management Direct. It's something that is um, for, uh, able to support you throughout your entire career as well. So it's not just about when you are studying. Um, there is a lot of things in there, like so our templates, for example, are there for business plans and uh, communication plans, and they can help you with some really uh, like difficult and challenging uh, areas that you might find in the workplace. Um, so it's good, really good for our learners to get used to it on their course, to understand sort of real impact it can have and the support that it can pay to them, because they can then provide that into the workplace and take it forward um, and make sure that when they are coming like, across these challenges and obstacles uh, in maybe their first or early career, and they're able to have the support of our expertise to be able to deliver maximum impact. Uh, and talking about getting, uh, getting jobs, uh, CMI also provides our, our members, but particularly our learners with the Career Development Centre as well. So the Career Development Centre is, is another online resource. You can find it through Management Direct. Um, and it is filled with online tools to boost employability prospects. Um, it says on the slide for after graduation, but it's also available for you all the way through your course. So if you are applying uh, for placement or for some summer work on internship or even just a part-time role during your studies. Um, the Career Development Centre is there to make sure you have the highest chance of being success uh, with skills and tools that are managed and supported by CMI. Uh, it has things like a CV builder tool. So you can go through um, and design your own CV, make sure that it's in really clear and easy format. Um, and then you can get it reviewed as well through CMI, through our CV360 review service. Now, the best thing about this for our learners is it is both free um, for them to use at a point of access, but also they are able to do this as many times as they like. So they can build their CV using the CV builder, get it reviewed on CV360. Uh, you get a mark out of 100, so you can see where you need to improve your CV. Go back to the builder, tweak it, go back into the CV360, edit again, see your score, and you can do that as many times as you like. So as your portfolio of skills and work increases, um, or just if you want to get it, something done really quickly and try to understand, you've got that option there to really make sure that your CV is as effective as it possibly can be. We have uh, an interview simulator and assessment center as well. So like we said, it's not just about uh, your job at the end of your career. It might be something you're trying to get during your studies. Um, if you have any interview at all, uh, we are able to do an interview simulator where you can record your answers to certain questions. Um, so common interview questions that come up and submitted by, uh, by industry experts. Um, you can see how you would answer them. So when you get them in a proper interview situation, then you're not sort of flummoxed by, um, by what you're asked. Um, but you can also, and like I said, record it. So and then look back and review how you performed. Think if there's anything you want to improve or anything you would want to change. Um, the assessment centre simulation is there as well. So this can help you particularly if you are applying for graduate jobs um, and if these have assessment centres as part of that recruitment process. Um, you're able to A, find out about certain companies' assessment centre processes, and um, but B, make sure that the tasks that they are likely to ask you or have asked previously, you're really clued up about and you have really great ideas for how you can answer them um, and sort of attack them effectively. Uh, there's loads of e-learning modules on there which can help you make your mark in the workplace, but also review your working practices um, and try and understand exactly what um, motivates you, what makes you tick if you're thinking about your career journey. And there's lots of case study videos to show students exactly how they can get the career that they want. So we have loads of role models on there who can provide you with sort of insight as to how they've got into the role that they have. Um, and it might give you advice for thinking about the path that you might want to take with your own um, learning. 
Um, students also get access to a whole wide range of member benefits. It's not just Management Direct and the Career Development Centre. Um, there's weekly webinars with business leaders from across the UK. So we have been hosting our Better Managers briefings every Friday. Um, you can access them through CMI's YouTube channel or through LinkedIn, um, where we have our chief executive and meets with business leaders from across the world to really talk about the challenges that they're facing, particularly in relation to uh, coronavirus um, and how they're embracing sort of the challenges and things they've had to do to adapt um, working places and working situations. We have a mentoring platform. So if your learner is thinking around, um, they want to get some maybe extra hints and tips from people in certain sectors, or if they are just in the early stage of their career and want some bit of sort of external advice, we can connect them to our community of managers and really make sure that they're able to get that externality and that external view um, of what they are, the challenges they're facing and what they need to do um, in order to become a success. Uh, you can chip in with our thought leadership and research and make sure that you're sort of feeding in to what the future of uh, leadership management looks like. We have a digital magazine filled with articles uh, that are able to provide you with, again, more insight and more sector knowledge from our community of managers. Um, but as well, we give you support to become a full charter manager. This is through our foundation charter manager uh, scheme, which we'll touch upon uh, later on in the slide. Um, but being charter manager is great. So our students get access to, to these pathways to become a charter manager. And there really is a win becoming a charter manager. On average, they get a £13,000 individual pay rise uh, from becoming chartered. Um, the impact on their business, they get a £62,000 uh, increase in uh, business revenues per year as a result of having charter managers. But also, there's a £22,000 impact on the UK economy for each charter manager. So it does really benefit both yourself, your organisations around you, uh, demonstrating more impact and sort of excellence and productivity and then also the UK economy. So it's definitely something to see as the ultimate sort of career goal in leadership and management. So I guess a, a lot of this is all about why, why does CMI have this impact and, and what exactly does it do, um, apart from giving you that qualification that really matters. So we know that CMI accreditation boosts employability. Um, it makes you more employable, you're more likely to get a job as a result of being on a CMI accredited course. And 58% of graduates from CMI accredited courses were in professional roles, compared with 48% of those from non-accredited business courses. Um, so it, do, it does give you that cutting edge, and it does give you something to both talk about in interviews, um, but also um, demonstrates your skills uh, really quickly to employers who can see that you, you take your CPD seriously um, and you've got that sort of recognized external uh, badge from CMI. Uh, the quote on there is from uh, Danielle, who was one of our graduates from the University of Derby. And she um, was really engaged with CMI, really um, took on board our, um, get our community involvement. She was involved with her regional area. She's been involved in those of our events and activities. Um, and by doing her CMI qualification, to really get involved with the professional body um, as well, she got herself a role, a really reputable graduate scheme at EY. So, it does have really demonstrable impact and it's something that she really sort of attributes as one of the main reasons as to why she got that graduate scheme. The other thing about CMI credit qualifications that are really important, I think, for, for your learners um, is that they do provide genuine skills to apply to the workplace. So once uh, your, your student, your family or friend might have completed their qualification, um, they're really like in a really good position to have maximum impact once they get into the workplace. So the top three skills that the employers are looking for in first time managers are managing innovation, managing people and financial skills. And we know that engaging with CMI and by doing our qualification, we are giving you the skills um, and giving learners the skills the, to achieve these, to demonstrate these. 85% say they acquired skills uh, to lead change and innovation. 82% acquired the skills to develop people and capabilities. And then 73% uh, developed the skills to manage resources and risk. So by engaging with CMI more, um, by taking it all on board and really maximizing sort of the, the benefits of engaging with a professional body, you will get those key skills that managers want, which might help you get that first role, but will definitely help you um, as you progress through your career, maybe to your second or third and start taking some steps up uh, the managerial uh, ladder on the, on the way to becoming your ultimate career goal. 89% um, of our CMI graduates say they use the skills that they uh, got from their accredited degrees in their current role. So it really is uh, relevant to industries. Um, and 88% say they gave them good career prospects. So it gives you real skills in the workplace. Uh, it gives you great prospects for the world of work you want to go into. And it's really relevant to that job once you get into it. 
Uh, and recent CMI graduates earn more money, which is always good. So uh, recent CMI grads earn a median of £28,000 compared to just 21000 for a typical business studies graduate. So um, CMI qualifications do really open doors and give you that industry respect and recognition that our learners need. It gives them a competitive edge when they're looking for jobs. 72% of CMI grads uh, agreed that their accredited degrees gave them that edge in the job application process, which when it's so competitive at the moment, particularly um, in the post-COVID world, um, having something that makes you stand out from the crowd is really helpful. Um, and we know that 94% of economically active CMI graduates uh, were employed in professional roles. So it will give you the chance to stand out from the crowd, but also it's likely to get you into um, make sure you're in professional and graduate uh, careers moving forward. And so we talked about uh, Foundation Charter Manager earlier. So once you, uh, our learners have graduated from CMI courses, um, they also get the recognition of becoming a Foundation Chartered Manager. So this is a tailored program to help them become a Charter Manager. It's really how we support our graduates move from being someone who's recently completed their qualification into someone who's able to demonstrate their, their effectiveness in the workplace. Um, it's a tailored program to help them to become chartered um, and to help them get um, to that chartered status. Uh, it keeps them on a career journey with CMI and continues to give access to their CPDs, to our events, to our resources like Management Direct or the Career Development Center. Um, and it gives them the uh, credentials of FCMGR after their name. So it's a really great way to quickly identify yourself as uh, someone who not only has those skills and qualifications, uh, but some really dedicated to their CPD um, and to developing their management and leadership skills. So once you've completed your CMI program or your endpoint assessment, you are automatically awarded this foundation charter manager status. Um, and then as you stay a member of CMI and you gain that three years of management experience, you'll then be eligible to do the charter manager assessment where you reflect upon everything you've developed in the workplace, all the skills that you have learned, um, and to make sure you're able to communicate them effectively, um, talk about the impact you've had, and then if you're successful in your assessment, you will get that chartered manager status. Um, so look, I know this is quite a, a whistle stop tour into uh, CMI's benefits, but I think it's really important that uh, we communicate to everyone who um, is involved and engaged with the learners on our courses to make sure that they're really aware of the benefits that being part of CMI can bring. So for next steps, what I would really do is encourage your students to look out for CMI accreditation. So if they're not um, already on a course, or they're thinking about maybe their options for the future, um, really do look out for university websites to find courses that are accredited by CMI. And you'll be on um, a lot of their promotion material and prospectuses and online. Um, but we know the impact that, by, that engaging with CMI can do for our graduate careers. So I really would recommend ensuring that, that you do look out for it. Um, if you ask any questions you might have right now in the in the chat or please connect with us through our social media channels um, on all the details will be in the follow-up emails or in the chat um, and really find out more about the services and support the CMI can offer. If your student is on a CMI accredited course, um, once they've started their course, they will be registered by their training provider and they send over the details to us and then we will email the learner with their login and registration information. So um, keep telling them to keep an eye out for that email by CMI, keep reminding them and um, to look for that CMI registration emails. And if they haven't heard anything, speak to uh, their business school or to their course administration team who um, might be able to provide them with more information. But we will be in touch. If they haven't heard anything soon, make sure that they chase their, sort of their university to find out more information. Um, but also if uh, being part of CMI is something that you're interested in, if it's something that having heard about the benefits you think would be really beneficial for your career, um, you can join our community for um, the less than the price of coffee and cake a month, five pounds a month, uh, you can join sort of the CMI community and get access to some of our resources. Um, so if you are interested, uh, please go to managers.org.uk. Uh, in the top right hand corner, there is the join the community button um, and find out more. And then it'd be great to, to have you on board with us. But um, that's all my slides. Um, and I'm now ready to answer any questions that we might have uh, with Ellen. Hi, Joe. Thanks for that. Uh, so we've had a few pre-submitted questions and we'll go through them now. The first one is, um, my child is about to enter their final year of A-levels. How do I find out if the universities they are applying for will be CMI accredited? Cool. So um, I touched upon this a little bit on that on that final slide. So hopefully that's given you some of the information that that you need. Um, but on, on sort of university websites, on prospectuses, it should say about CMI accreditation. And um, we do have relationships and, and partnerships with over sort of 120 uh, university providers. So do um, have a look uh, and see if 
we mentioned there. So uh, all the information should be on the university page. Um, but if you are doing an apprenticeship as well, um, it's worth contacting your um, your employer or your training provider to see if CMI are involved in that process as well um, to make sure that you, you get the most of it. Um, I think what's also key to find as, as well is that it's not just those on our accredited programs who can get access. So as I said at the end, um, if you are interested in joining CMI, um, you are able to join the career through that join the community page. So if you think all of these resources that we've spoken about are really relevant to you, you still be a member of CMI, you just won't get access to obviously the qualifications. So if you want things like Management Direct and the Career Development Centre, um, encourage your learner to, to have a look on there and see if it's something that might work for them. Perfect, yes. Um, the next one is, when do new students find out about their CMI registration? Cool. So this varies um, at centre to centre. Some people register their um, learners at the start of their first year, some do it sort of further on throughout their course. Um, so if you've got any questions about it, I would recommend that you uh, ask your student to contact your training provider or to your university. It will let you know exactly what that process would look like. But um, we will be in contact as soon as you're registered to let you know um, when you are able to access our resources. So um, hopefully as soon as you are able to, you will be able to access Management Direct and Career Development Centre and all of our events um, as often as you would like. Perfect. And the last one is, how can I encourage a student to make the most of their CMI membership? Um, so I think, that's, I think that's a really interesting question. I think that um, what is key is to just keep reminding them about um, some of the resources they've got. So if they're thinking about um, applying for roles in their future career, talk about the Career Development Centre. Um, if perhaps they're looking for some external advice, talk about our mentoring uh, services or some of our events. Um, share articles. If you see anything that's uh, related to CMI from either our like, LinkedIn channels or any of our social media networks, share them with, um, with your learners because they um, have access to all of this. This is all there for them. So it would be great if they can make the most of it. But I think just keep, um, yeah, keep reminding them exactly about the benefits of that qualification. And uh, it's the more involved that they can see other people being, hopefully that will uh, lead to them being more engaged with it and with our resources. Yes. Perfect. Um, that's it for today's session. Thank you to everyone who joined us and thank you, Joe, for your insights and expertise. Thank to you. find out more about Management Direct, click the link within the live chat comments. If you would like to find out more about CMI member benefits, the link is also available in the live chat box from today. Thank you again and enjoy the rest of your day. Cool. Thanks, guys.